Hello, some time ago I did a review for the FIO K7 and a lot of people did these reviews and a lot of users enjoy K7 because it was a device with really incredible price to quality ratio. For $2200 you uh, can get uh, THX uh, amplifier and uh, two 4493 digital tonal of converters and uh, up to 2 watts of power from the balanced output so definitely great device for those who want to build some uh, setup and stay with two kidneys after that but few get some feedback and they decided to release an updated version or actually it's not an updated it's just uh, named k7bt and as you can easily guess it's the same familiar k7 but this time with uh, bluetooth functionality so uh, not much was changed except of adding bluetooth and uh, it's uh, as usual it's done with qualcomm uh, chip and it supports LDAC, supports uh, aptx uh, adaptive and so on but uh, specifications i mean digital tonal converter amplifier output power remains the same so just let's have a closer look as you can see it came in a nice package with good polygraphy and unfortunately it looks like uh, delivery service used my box to uh, blow up uh, Russian tank or something like that but uh, thanks to the good packaging uh, of internals by FIO uh, it uh, survived that so only box suffered and uh, you can see aptx, aptx hd, aptx adaptive, ldac, sbc, aac so virtually all codecs you can expect uh, for the normal device of course there are codecs like lhdc and some others but now ldc and the family of aptx i think considered as a standard option so inside everything is organized but i will just use a bit of shake you can actually grab two openings and pull it and it will work okay except for cases when box was damaged as was mine was and additional box with accessories inside so let it fall i'm not that interesting here main issue will be if my kid will come to understand what what did fell down and then he can start playing with this box so here is device itself and here inside of this box we getting external power supply USB cable bit more silica gel and adapters and that's some manual so 6.3 millimeter adapter USB cable then power supply unit and the power cord that suits your country as you can see all you need to start enjoying this thing right now in terms of design uh, not much was changed since last version it's still pretty compact well built uh, desktop device it's uh, pretty lightweight uh, but uh, it definitely build of uh, some nice metal not it's not of course that uh, reliable heaviness of k9 pro but still as a desktop device uh, it will look and feel pretty nice it has rubber feet attached so it will stay on the table pretty well uh, so no uh, chances of pulling the pulling it to the floor by dragging headphones cord uh, are not that high on the front panel we have input selector which cycles through usb optical coaxial line and bluetooth inputs we have uh, two level gain adjustment and we have output selector so phone out preamplifier and line out so line out and preamplifier settings of course uh, means that uh, you get either uh, uh, with, you, you get output from this out uh, with or without volume control 
big knob to actually control volume and also it works as an on switch. You click it and it starts working and there is a circular indicator around this uh, knob. It has a smooth rotation and actually it uh, still has this uh, volume control schema when you rotate uh, knob and the volume just follows it after some short delay. For me it's not an issue, but a lot of people were complaining about that, to be honest I don't know why. In my opinion it's a pretty good feature, if you rotate knob slowly, then actually uh, volume change is almost instant, but it protects from cases when you uh, did a big rotation, so you have a, uh, some uh, part of second to rotate it back. But in general, to be honest, uh, for me it's uh, both options are okay. And here is 6.3 mm line out and balanced uh, output pentacon. No, nothing on top and sides, and on the back side we've got uh, power input, USB input, coaxial and USB inputs, so you can attach it to all kinds of uh, digital sources you have, and uh, line out and line in, so you can use it as pure digital tonal converter or you can use it as pure amplifier, so you have that maximum freedom of uh, different combinations, which is pretty important for those who trying to build some budget setup and uh, get the ma maximum of the components, so let's plug DC 12 volts, of course here can be used for example, and actually let's rotate it to turn off, here can be used the PL50, but it won't make much sense for this device, uh, because it costs like uh, more than a half of this uh, digital tonal converter. So we rotate the knob, and you can see this rainbow, and then it turns to cyan, but we need Bluetooth, for example, so one more press and it toggled the input switch and it's waiting for the connection. Let's see, did it already connect to, yeah, it's already connected to my M17 and uh, there is a companion app, few control can control it. Uh, but uh, there is not much options you can change. So you can select uh, Bluetooth codecs you want to use or you don't want to use. With help of this menu you can force your smartphone to use some particular codec. In the settings uh, you can rename this device, uh, update firmware, clear pairing, restore to default settings, uh, but there is no updates uh, yet. And also there is an equalizer and it works as a graphic equalizer and parametric if you oh, swipe too much, uh, if you tap and hold these uh, sliders. But actually this only works for the Bluetooth mode, not for the regular digital tonal converter mode, because all that equalization is done via Bluetooth chip. And also here uh, guy can be loaded some quick start guide, so uh, not a big one, but in general you can see that it's really simple and straightforward device without any complicated controls, so you can just get it and start using with zero learning curve. And of course about the sound, as you can see I built the most possible FIO setup, so here is our K9, sorry, K7 Bluetooth, FIO is FT3 and M17 is a transport, now it's connected via Bluetooth, but of course uh, for the real test I connected it to my MacBook as a transport to get the full potential, but uh, for now I just want to show some tracks as an example, so it will be ok with M17 in Bluetooth mode. And actually if you heard uh, K7 or seen my previous review, so sound is almost the same without any changes. So. Probably if you're not interested in, uh, in further explanation, you can just uh, uh, go off. But anyway, I need to say first a few things about the Bluetooth connection quality. It's pretty good with all codecs, uh, except for LDAC in the maximum uh, uh, sound quality, but that 9, 990 bandwidth mode 
doesn't work okay with almost any gear I've tested, it's just a real holiday when it's work normally. But with all other settings it holds connection really well and up to 10 meters even a thin wall between the uh, transport and uh, receiver is okay, working okay. And now you can go. And thanks to everyone who stays with me, either you like my voice or you want to see example tracks, uh, anyway. So it's a typical uh, sound that Fio makes recently, it's technical, it's detailed, with a slight boost of dynamics that gives you a bit of wow effect and actually uh, doesn't allow sound to uh, be too monitoring or too analytical. So it's technical, but at the same time sounds pretty live and engaging. I'd uh, say that it's a pretty universal tuning uh, that Fio consistently brings with their devices. So bass go to maximum depth, it's controlled really well, even with 350 ohms uh, headphones there is no problems, but uh, taking into account uh, almost 2 watts of uh, maximum output power I think it's something to be expected. And of course you don't need to push it to the full potential, it still will be controlling low frequencies really nicely. Uh, bass is fast, but not uh, faster than it should be, so it's not trying to be uh, dry or analytical, but at the same time it will give you good textures, really nice impact, really good rumble for the deep bass, and a uh, nice amount of details uh, to represent some uh, timber rich instruments that goes to the low frequency domain. Of course it won't do that uh, as perfectly and effortlessly as K9 Pro, but still like it's younger brother of K9 Pro and it has a lot of uh, similarity in the sound. So pretty balanced bass with good control and uh, sounding musical and technical at the same time. So what examples I prepared? First one is uh, the Ondekoza, it's Japanese uh, taiko drummers and of course uh, it starts with flute that sounds really nice, but then we transition to the drums like bigger drums, smaller drums, and all of them require nice good controlled low frequencies. Not only lows of course, but they require that resonance, they require depth to uh, give you that sense of realism for the big drum and actually it delivers that uh, pretty well. And uh, second example, actually don't ask me what was that chain of my thoughts, but I found on YouTube a British TV show Taskmaster and I'm enjoying it right now, I really like it. And uh, somehow, uh, or maybe it's pretty obvious, my thoughts transitioned to the Hugh Laurie and uh, his uh, two albums are both really great in terms of low frequencies. They are well recorded but it, and they uh, have nice uh, presence. But at the same time they're not over dominating the mix, but they are noticeable and rich and of course this track is not an exception and this device delivers it in a really really enjoyable way. Technical, juicy, palpable and so on. Mid frequencies are uh, natural with slightly boosted dynamics, but not too much for the mid frequencies and it almost doesn't... Uh, accent emotions, doesn't try to add some weight uh, or like uh, hide uh, some issues with record quality, so nice record is required here. And when it's nice it will definitely deliver you good sense of uh, naturalness, richness, saturation and so on. Of course uh, Bluetooth connection will lower that. But and uh, typically in the audiophile community it's common to think that Bluetooth is so bad that uh, it's just impossible to listen. But from my experience of course Bluetooth is inferior to the wired connection, but at the same time it's pretty good experience, especially with modern codecs, uh, even aptX, uh, I'm not speaking even about uh, aptX HD or Adaptive or LDAC, it gives a pretty enjoyable result, uh, of course uh, not for the top of the line setup, but like for mid level setup it's kind of enjoyable both for speakers and headphones, so I really like uh, that added bonus feature here. 
Imaginary stage is above average, it's pretty spacious, uh, built really nicely and uh, of course not stellar like K9 Pro offers uh, for us, but still pretty enjoyable and uh, well managed, so accurate, nice and well uh, presented. So what I've got for the mid frequencies, uh, first one is Locomotion by John Coltrane. Of course, this is a heavy load for almost all uh, frequencies, uh, but today it's just example for the mids. A lot of things is going on here, including, uh, of course, uh, Coltrane it, uh, himself. But uh, other instruments are also taking a noticeable role and uh, it requires a technical source. Of course, and this uh, digital tonal converter also does that. I won't be saying that for this for its price and not comparing with more expensive, but just keep that in mind constantly. And another great example, it's uh, Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington, Azalea, uh, and uh, like you know, I what I like for about this record, it's how effortless it is, how it's. Uh, Mm. It's just, you know, uh, I, I have a sense that it's not like two artists recording and playing, it's just like they relaxing, enjoying uh, music uh, and uh, uh, creating uh, something new together. And here, of course, we have a pretty, uh, for, uh, pretty sharp uh, trumpet and at the same time uh, pretty relaxed uh, drum part and they give a good contrast and then uh, we've got vocal and other things so it requires good technical performance and the k7 pro bluetooth also did it really well and the treble it has a really nice extension of course uh, layering is uh, rather basic uh, but still it's pretty good results here not uh, like that rich, super saturated with overtones treble of uh, high-end gear, but even basic layering is present here and you'll get a sense of airiness, you'll get sense of spaciousness. Actually, it's not trying to highlight treble or to hide it, so basically just play it as is. And uh, if you're really sensitive to the treble, of course, you need to test it because there are a lot of pretty sibilant and sharp tracks and it will just play them this way without any attempts to hide that fact. And uh, for the examples, uh, we've got Steven Wilson Watchmaker, really like this uh, album, Raven that refused to sing and really like Steven Wilson's uh, solo works and non-solo too. Actually, this guy is pure Midas in the world of music. Everything he touched became gold and legendary. And here you've got percussion, you've got airy guitars, you've got vocals that goes to the treble area thanks to overtones. And all of that requires good, well-defined treble. It's lacking a bit of layering to represent it fully, but besides that it sounds really natural and saturated. And uh, another example, as you can see, it's pure audiophiliac track, even album name just say it so. And it's Libertango by Trio de Curla and it's really well recorded version of Libertango with incredible sense of realism and also I'd like to hear a bit more uh, treble layering here, but for this segment the treble performance here is just close to maximum level that we can achieve so far and because of that uh, all that sounds uh, pretty engaging. In terms of uh, pairings, of course, uh, there is no issues. It drives uh, full-size headphones and even tough ones really well except for a few models of course that require more than 2 watts of power and it's pretty good with sensitive in-ear monitors just uh, keep uh, gain low and uh, actually it will behave well with them and one correction I need to make also I did uh, some direct comparisons with my K7 and actually this volume wheel is faster here for this device there is no that noticeable delay uh, of K7. 
And uh, speaking about the comparisons, uh, you know, uh, nothing changed since uh, last review, so I will add links uh, to the description and you can just uh, jump the timestamp and uh, uh, hear comparisons there. If you need in some particular comparison, of course, feel free to ask me here and I will be glad to answer. And that's all for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day.